Well, happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome back. My View on the View, the after the show chat for Wednesday, November 6, 2024. I am making this way, way early because I'm on my lunch break at work. And so I have to do it now because when I get home, we have a lot of things we're going to try to get done today. So let's talk. Let's talk about the show. I'm going to share my viewer experiences. Uh, I can't wait to read the comments of those of you who are going to share your viewer experiences today. I do have a few clips that I want us to listen to. If you are new to the after the show chats, you don't know this, but I don't always play clips. Why? Because the after the show chats are really for those people like me who watch the show. So if you watch the show, you already know what was said. And so there's really no need to, um, for us to, to do that. But from time to time, I will play clips. Now, when I do my stories, um, then of course I'm playing clips and all those things. And I'm also playing music, intro music and things like that. So we just do the chats a little bit different. So welcome back. Okay, so I was wrong. Kamala lost. Trump won overwhelmingly. Um, babe and I, we, we stayed up. I think we went to bed. It had to be like 3 a.m., something like that. Um, mostly, <laughs> mostly because um, Babe and his brother, they were on the phone talking, and then, you know, it was the FaceTime. And, and then, you know, it's like, well, we, uh, we might as well eat. So, <laughs> and, you know, when you live in a place where there's 24 hours everything. So we ate, you know, we... Um, went through a drive through and just, you know, just kind of rode around our city and just looked around. You know, I think now that I look back on it, I think early this morning, we were both still just processing because we were disappointed. But I think it's important to demonstrate how to lose gracefully. We lost. Those of us who voted for Kamala, those of us who voted for Tim, I think if you have any children in your life, be they yours, grandchildren, stepchildren, you have to demonstrate Yes, we have feelings, so we have to. It's okay to talk about how we feel about this. Um, it feels disappointing. It feels like a letdown. That's real. Those are real feelings. Anytime your team loses, no matter whether it's the football team or, in this case, um, someone right running for the office of president. But then, too, on the other side of the feelings are, okay, it is what it is. And so now, as we allow ourselves to continue to feel, now let's just process. Um, I don't think it's necessary to throw a fit, you know, and I know some people are throwing fits all over the Internet. I'm not one of them because I'm not in fit mode. But I will tell you, um, I was... I wasn't so much surprised about the Electoral College. What really surprised me, what really shocked me, was the overwhelming majority of the popular vote that he won. Now, I think it's important to clarify something. I am like a lot of you in the listening audience. I know people personally, so these are not random folks on the internet, personally, who said who didn't vote at all? They said they didn't want to have anything to do with politics on the national level. It's too divisive. It's too nasty. It's too this. People are just emotionally exhausted uh, by the whole chaos of the last, like the guy said on the show today, close to ten years. So it's very important that we clarify: this was not all Americans speaking. This was the portion of Americans who went out to vote. This was the overwhelming majority of that group of people. I think that's very important. Um, let me see. I actually made a podcast last night uh, for my other group because we had been talking about a whole lot of things, and I knew that, and that podcast is request-based. This is not a request-based podcast. Like, you can't ask me to talk about certain things. That's not what I do over here. Um, I come on and I share my thoughts about The View. But over there, <clears throat> over the last couple of years, we've talked about Trump on and off and so on and so forth. And, of course, a lot of things dealing with politics. And so I have a piece. I, I honestly do. I had a piece this morning. I keep wanting to say yesterday because I was. we were like, we ain't been up this late <laughs> unless somebody was sick in the family and, you know, you're at the hospital up late. But we haven't been up this late. Y'all Y'all know most of us old, child. We ain't been up. <laughs> Young folks, I know y'all can stay up to the wee hours and go to work like it ain't nothing. But, honey, most of us are suffering today. We're like, <laughs> when I get home, the first thing I'm going to do is take a nap and get my sleep back, child. <laughs> so, anyway, even with daylight saving time, if you live in a state that has daylight saving times, and we do, 
you 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 gain an hour behind your child. Uh-uh. So, but I am at peace. Um, what I what my thought on this is. I hoped she would win. I thought she would. I was wrong. I have no problem saying that. I'll be wrong again about a tons of things, just like I'll be right about tons of things. Um, I feel disappointed. I feel, um, I, but I don't feel hopeless. You want to know why? Because I'm a woman of faith. And so I don't feel hopeless. I did my part as an American. I voted my conscience. I secondly, I prayed. See, prayer and action go together. We're told that as Christians. Faith without works is dead, being alone. So my, my belief was the best person out of the two choices I had for my country, I felt the best person was Kamala. So I voted for Kamala. And I prayed for our country. Okay, that's all I can do as an American citizen. I can't go up there and make the folks, you know, do the do what I believe is the right thing. I can't do that. So now that I've done all that I can do, I now have to just rest and turn the rest over to God. This is a life lesson for my young people. We're talking about the election, but this is how you better live your life. You do all you can. You do what you feel and believe in your heart is right. And then you have to turn the rest over in this case, in my case, to God, but whatever it is you think or believe or whatever, that's how you have to live. And then you just have to move on with your life. Now, I will say this before I get into what I thought about the the show and what stood out to me. You know, I wholeheartedly disagree with this. This is not good for our country. Um, We must understand that when people show us who they are, it's our job to believe them. But when we make a person show us over and over and over who they are, we become more and more damaged, more and more burned, more and more hurt. So for all the people who actually believe that Trump was the best for our country, like I believed Kamala was, you know, we all have a right to our beliefs. They have placed their vote And so I believe we're now going to enter a time where people are going to experience the consequence of their choices. See, this is life. When we make right choices, we get right results. When we make wrong choices, we experience wrong results. The saying truly is you have to believe them the first time. The first administration of Trump was enough for me. He showed me who he was. I believed him. So I didn't vote for him the second time or now the third time. So that's kind of where I am. I feel hopeful because my faith is in something greater than me. I feel that I did my best. I feel like, Anna, I did my best. I did my part. And now as things begin to unfold, I will be watching. Now, Trump will be my president, even though I don't want him to be. So guess what? He's going to get my prayers. I'm a woman of faith and I'm a woman of prayer. And yes, I can be petty, but I believe in being emotionally mature. He, he has won, and it appears from what uh, we saw, fair and square. So congratulations to him. Congratulations to J.D. Vance. He, he made it plain what he was going to do if he was reelected. Obviously, there were more people, who the ones who went out to vote, who didn't believe him than those who believed him. So as... The destruction descends on our country in a way that we could have never imagined. I will be saying, I know I did the right thing. And God, I expect for you to protect me and my household because we made the right choice. You say, how do you know uh, it was God? Well, I personally get my concept of God from the Bible. I don't just make it up in my head. You know, that's kind of what people do nowadays. And my Bible tells me every person God chose was a man of character. And when they weren't men of character, God dealt with them. And when they repented of their bad character, God forgave them. And he reinstated them. So this is a man who has shown us he's not a person of character. He's not. So... I know that that's not God's choice. God's choice choice is always men and women of character. And of course, we live in a day and time where people have redefined what good character is to their own demise. 
No parent will be able to say to their kid in good faith now, don't lie. Uh, Don't use those words. Especially if the kids have overheard them talking about, and the grandkids have overheard them talking about voting for Trump. Trump is this. You can't do it. Not in good conscience. You can do it. A person can do it, but not in good conscience. Every time the kid lies, you got to just be okay with it. And people like Alyssa was saying this morning, there are somehow people have found a way to separate the man from his policies. No, they haven't. This is about people. That's what this election was about. It wasn't about Trump. It's about the folks who went out to vote from out of those who went to vote. And I keep saying that specifically because I want to make sure we don't uh, we can't include people who didn't vote. Like Sarah said, they don't even have a part in the conversation. Um, But. Are the people who voted and they voted overwhelmingly for him? That was about them, y'all. That wasn't about Trump. People don't want this country to move forward in the way it has been. They feel like they've just been slacked, you know. And we all, of good conscience, folks, we know what it's really about. And so those are my thoughts. So I I want to get that out because I know people were going to want to know. Okay, now let's talk about the show. Well, I got to tell you, I was really glad that that he didn't bring Chris Christie. I saw enough of Chris Christie last night. With his big behind. <laughs> Y'all know, I keep saying, I don't know why Chris, you know, how old is Chris? It's like Chris Christie, Chris, you know that having all this weight on you is not healthy. I mean, you're putting yourself into an early grave, you know, but anyway, I digress. Uh, but um, so I was really glad that we had Rick Klein. Now I saw Rick Klein last night too, but, um, and now Rick Klein doesn't do good TV, you know, I think Rick is more of a journalist, but so there wasn't a whole lot of good TV this morning, but um, I was I would rather take him than Chris Christie. I felt like the way a uh, shout out to you, Brian, the way the women handled this today, they were they did a good job. Bravo to them. They really did. I know that they were all disappointed, except Alyssa. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But um, again, we have to demonstrate as fully grown folks how to lose appropriately because we don't always win, y'all. And I am, um, I am happy the way they handled it. Um, I know some people maybe were expecting Joy, to Joy in particular, to just like go crazy. And I'm sure she did. You see, I also believe in living by this concept of a caterpillar concept, you know, in nature, where when the caterpillar is turning into a butterfly, there are some things people don't need to see. So the butterfly gets up under a leaf, you see, and it attaches itself and it does its transformation there um, so that no one really can know what's going on. Um, We live in a day and time where people feel like they got to put everything out there for people. They got to put all their information out there for people. And people actually feel like they they have a right to know everything about somebody. Uh, People feel like if I'm happy, I'm going to put it on social media. If I'm on the toilet, I'm going to put it on social media. If I'm at a nice restaurant, I'm going to put it. So people are busy filming their lives or they're not really living their lives. So I I know that behind the scenes, she went crazy. She went berserk, as they say. Um, And I'm sure they all did. But, you know, it's lights, camera, action now, and you got to make sure that only those who, who know you well enough and understand, those are the people who deserve to see the breakdown, so to speak, the emotional breakdown, but not everybody. Everybody doesn't deserve to see that. And so I was glad that Joy was very tame this morning. Maybe she had a gummy, as she talked about yesterday. <laughs> um, I, I have to say, Sarah and Sonny's positions today resonated with me. So I'm going to play those couple of clips. Not everything they said, because you know, the women each get close to 30 seconds, child. So you know what you got to do. Just sit on your end. You know, I'm no, I'm no sound person. So here we go. This is Sarah. This is just a portion of something Sarah said that I I really, really liked. And I thought I agree with this. Take a listen. I wanted to say for anyone that needs an example of when the person you voted for does not win, you do not say the system must be broken or that it was rigged. You say it is what it is and you show up anyway. And I want to commend all those people that voted because you sometimes hear people say, well, it didn't matter. No, it did matter. That was still your currency. That was still your power. And people turned out. Now, if you didn't vote, you really don't have a say in the conversation. So you can go ahead and sit down. But for the rest of you, and then a lot of what... um, I think about 
is what I always tell my kids when things go on. You feel what you feel. Everyone has different emotions. Some people got what they wanted. A lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. And you feel anything that comes up, and then you turn around and you say, let's look at the tapes. Let's see what we did. Let's see how we continue to fight for the people that we care about. And you take one step in front of the other. That's and so right. here That's we right. are today. And Okay, now let me play what's uh, a portion of what uh, Sonny said. I really resonated with this too. Let's see. I, I don't know. I'm profoundly disturbed. Um, I think if you look at the New York Times this morning, uh, the headline was America makes a, a perilous choice. I think that in 2016, we didn't know what we would get from a, a Trump administration, but we know now. And um, we know now that he will have almost unfettered power. And so I worry, not about myself, actually. I don't worry about my station in life. I worry about the working class. I worry about my mother, a retired teacher. I worry about our elderly and their Social Security and their Medicare. I worry about my children's future, especially my daughter, who now has less rights than I have. And I remember my father telling me many, many years ago that I was the first person in, in his family to enjoy full civil rights. And now I have less civil rights than I had when he told me that. So again, I'm profoundly disturbed that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution did not prevent someone who participated in an insurrection right, right. from becoming president of the United States. I think that going forward, the convicted felon box That's unemployment right. applications right. better be taken off. Because if you can be the president of the United States, Okay, and I'll stop right there. I totally agree with that. If you can be the you, president of the United States of America, the supposed most powerful nation on earth, the most powerful position in this country, and be a convicted felon, I don't want to hear nothing from folks about convicted felons. They all need to be able to vote now. Their voting rights need to be reinstated uh, uh, immediately. Uh, no housing discrimination, no job discrimination. Don't even ask, right? Um, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Every single person who's raising children, whether they're younger or teenagers or in their young adult years, if you are a grandma or a granddad, you can't ever say to you, and you voted for Trump, you voted for a man of that 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 quality of a person, that, that low quality of a person. You can't say to them, don't lie. Lying is wrong. <laughs> Especially, like I said, when they've heard you say, you know, you know, Trump, that, that, you know, it's kind of like smoking and then telling your kids or grandkids don't smoke while they're watching you smoke. Or if it were me watching me smoke. So no, it doesn't work that way. So yeah, um, Rick Klein was on there twi two segments. I'm going to be honest, guys, I kind of muted during that because I heard enough of it last night. Um, now, let's talk about this. <laughs> When, this is later in the conversation. What also stood out to me today on the show is when Sonny was talking about un, the, a poll that showed uneducated white women uh, voted for Trump. And Alyssa, you know, chimed in and said, you know, that's, you know, basically in essence, and I, I'm paraphrasing what Alyssa said. You shouldn't call them that, basically. That, you know, that doesn't help the situation. And then ne Sunny later came back when they came back from break and she corrected that and she said the poll showed, quote, non college educated women, close quote. So, um, yeah. But now let me talk about Alyssa. I told you guys um, that I really don't believe Alyssa voted for um, Kamala. I believe she voted for Trump. And how I know I was right is the gloat she had. She tried to hide it. But she was gloating this morning. There you have it. That's what stood out to me today. Now, tomorrow is Thursday. And I forgot who they said was going to be there tomorrow. Um, but the bottom line is um, we, we now know who our next president is going to be. Um, for those of us who are going to remain here in the States, we are going to have four, four years. Four years. That's if, you know, um, he, his health holds up, his mental state holds up and no, no additional assassination attempts um, or him going to jail because he still has trials, um, you know, and things of that nature that he'll have to deal with. So, yeah, so it'll be interesting, you know, who uh, who's fighting who now to get uh, positions in his cabinet. Yeah, and I, I'm going to come back uh, later this week, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this. Uh, I now know for certain the table is changing next season. It has to. Um, this election um, is... is it's definitely something that has changed. It's, it's going to change the show. So at any rate, so guys, there you have it. Those are my views on The View. Um, I enjoyed talking with you guys today. Don't forget, let me know you want these to continue by hitting the thumbs up button. I appreciate all of you who are doing that more. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.